part seven of our crossband repeater build project. That's what's coming up next on El Cara Ham Radio. Well, folks, here we are back again working on our uh, multitude of crossband repeater kits. We're looking and building seven of these for a uh, gravel rally that we help provide communications for that's in a very rural area with uh, basically no cell service in most of the area. And also for other activities that we do outside and in the hills of South Central Kentucky and Northern Tennessee. Uh, and so we've got several of these uh, kits completely finished, but we're working on a few more here. And uh, decided to go back and redo a little bit of the work we had done. If you'll notice on this kit here, it's mostly complete, but one of the radios has an LCD screen and one doesn't. Uh, the radios will work just fine. They're both ICOM radios, uh, VHF and UHF. Uh, but what we decided to do and really kind of got lucky with is we found some more of the radios that have the LCD screen. So we decided to get those and replace a few of these that had the uh, non-LCD screen radios in them. Uh, we didn't have to do this, but it will make using these kits a little bit easier for folks to have those radios with a screen on it. Uh, we're going to be documenting these. Each kit will have a laminated sheet on how to set it up. They're all going to be pre-programmed for all the different frequencies and positions where we might use them. So although each kit will sort of have a designation, any uh, uh, one of these kits could be used in any location we might need it, including the seventh unit, which is going to be a completely extra unit anyway, uh, just for the, uh, you know, the unknowns that may occur. So here we are. We're taking out one of the uh, non-LCD screen units. Uh, again, nothing wrong with those radios. They work just fine in this scenario, just like the others. But since we sort of got lucky and found a few more of the ones with the LCD screen, we figured we'd go ahead and do this. And uh, we're going to hold on to these radios that don't have an LCD screen because they could still come in handy. Uh, remember, these are commercial grade radios, so very rugged, uh, even though they've seen a lot of service in their lifetime uh, already, but they're very rugged and very heavy duty uh, heat sinks and things. And so we'll uh, hang on to these and probably think of some other project in the future that we can uh, can use these on. So these club assets are certainly not going to go to waste. Uh, so we got together recently and again put some more time into the crossband repeaters. Uh, again we uh, pulled a few more of these units uh, that were almost done and pulled the special pigtails that we have to make for them out because uh, we of course can reuse those as well. And then also uh, added in the temperature sensor, as you'll see here in a little while, to uh, operate the fan that we're putting on these so that if the temperature uh, gets higher than a certain level, it'll kick the fan on. It'll keep these cool because uh, we never know what time of the year we may be uh, needing to use these. Now, uh, for the gravel rally, uh, that happens in, uh, what is it, uh, March or April. And so it's usually not very hot yet. Uh, in this area. Uh, humid maybe already, but not not usually super hot yet. Uh, but it never hurts to have, uh, you know, to have some extra cooling in any kind of a scenario. So here's one of the kits. Again, it was mostly completed, but we decided to pull the non-LCD uh, radio off of it there. You can see the open spot in the bracket. And then we're going to replace it with one of the ones that, uh, that has an LCD. So um, with the uh, three or four... Um, however many radios we found recently that the club purchased, uh, we're going to have, I think we've got five of these kits completely done. They're all ready to go, and I think they've all got LCD radios in them. Number six is close. I think it just needs a cable or two. And number seven, the extra one, uh, I think could, could use uh, an LCD radio if we can find one. Uh, and then maybe, again, uh, a couple of cables or something. So uh, we've got quite a few working units already. And um, and we're just looking to finish off the last couple, really. So we should be able to get these done, completed, do some uh, antenna testing, some further antenna testing for uh, the gravel rally coming up in 2024. 
Uh, this will be the third year that we've helped provide communications for the rally. And we know the area well, uh, and we've done lots and lots of testing, uh, but we'll have some slightly newer equipment this year. And I think we're going to uh, maybe test uh, some other antenna designs and things just to make sure we can provide, you know, maximum radio coverage consistently uh, throughout the different areas of the race. It's, uh, it's in three major areas in, uh, in the counties out there. And again, in those hills and, and in the valleys, there's, uh, there's really no cell service. Uh, you can't count on that at all. And it's very difficult to get radio service. That's why we set up these crossband repeat uh, units uh, at the tops of a lot of the mountains and hills out there, just so we can get in and out of those, those mountains. Because a lot of the, uh, the, the roads that they race on go along the bottom of the, the valleys, along, uh, many times along creeks and things that are, of course, at the bottom of the valley. Beautiful area, but uh, a challenge to uh, to get communications uh, to in and out of. Uh, so again, we're putting in the pig tail. We've moved it from the previous radio over to this one. I think we still have um, a handful of these uh, cables we need to finish making up. Uh, our president, uh, AC4DM Don, has has done a lot of that work right there at headquarters. Uh, a couple of others have helped uh, with uh, the creation of these cables. They're not all that difficult. Uh, a little bit kind of fiddly. But you just take your time and you can put these together. Uh, again, sometimes you can find these, and there used to be a, a small shop or two that made these and sold them. Uh, but they're pretty expensive. They were running, I don't know, something like $90 a piece. And uh, and then it got to where you couldn't hardly find them at all. So since we had a specific need, um, we decided to uh, uh, just order components and start to make them ourselves. Uh, the few, the relatively few that we needed. So here we're putting, uh, again, the LCD uh, radio back into the bracket on this uh, unit. You can see the, uh, the thermature uh, or, or temperature thermal control there uh, on the top of the radio. We're going to be drilling and tapping that heat sink and putting that on there. You'll see that in a moment. And uh, all the radios have that. We found some of those fairly inexpensively. And again, they just uh, trigger whenever the temperature reaches a certain level. And that uh, helps us to kick on the, the fan you can see there. To, uh, to help keep the units cool uh, when they are, in fact, in use. And, of course, by having two separate radios to do the cross-banding, uh, it means each radio effectively only carries about half the load instead of having basically a single radio unit uh, do that. Of course, a lot of us may have mobile units, and some of those can do cross-band. Uh, but then um, the components in the radio are all doing kind of all the work. Uh, they can do it okay, but they, they're just not meant commercially and to, uh, to work for long periods of time. This gravel race can easily run, um, uh, you know, 10, 12 hours easily throughout the day. And, and as far as the people involved, uh, it's a lot longer day than that, uh, you know, 14, 15 hours sometimes. So here you can see the whole unit was set up and powered up and running. So here uh, we're just uh, marking and um, punching uh, where we're going to be drilling and tapping so that we can screw the uh, thermal control uh, onto the uh, units. We've done this for each one of them. Uh, you can see the little uh, indentation there where the uh, he uh, got ready to drill. Now he's just going to drill the hole out, use the tap. He's got a nice little small uh, tap and, uh, and die set. And uh, use the correct drill bit size, and then you tap it out for the screw size you've got. So he's got a lot of that equipment. Some of us may have some of those those kinds of kits as well. Uh, I've used uh, some of this kind of stuff uh, on a, my motorcycle when I was working on it. One of the bolts broke off uh, into the aluminum, uh, uh, you know, head of the of the motorcycle. It's a classic motorcycle, and had to drill it out and retap it. So there he is. He's just putting in the uh, the threads and uh, do uh, two screw holes, and then we can just screw that nicely onto this unit. And we've been doing this for each. Each one of these just to make it nice and strong and secure neat and uh, and organized uh, so he's just doing some of that work there so uh, I'm putting that screw in so uh, again we've got at least I think five of these kits completely done number six I believe is very very close just needs a, a cable or two I think and number seven isn't real far away uh, I think it could be gotten ready uh, pretty quickly with with a couple of cables or something uh, you know, basically a matter of, um, I don't believe it has uh, two of the LCD screen radios. Uh, again, the non-LCD screen radios work just fine and can be pre-programmed just like the ones with LCD screens. 
And here we're doing a little bit of testing just to make sure that the cross banding and the, and the radios are working just fine. The non-LCD screens work just fine, uh, but they wouldn't be as easy to deal with in the field if, if something did go wrong uh, in the field, uh, whoever uh, may be uh, you know, trying to go and, and work on this situation. We just want to make sure it'll be as easy as possible for folks to you know, change frequencies or whatever may need to happen. And again, we're going to have some documentation uh, in each one of these kits in the box uh, to help with that as well. So we're getting real close on this, folks. Uh, here we are doing, again, a power-up test. Checking some of the preset configurations there. AC40M. Running through the program memories. All right, folks, that'll wrap up this video. This is Chris, KY4CKP for Lake Cumberland Amateur Radio Association. We'll see you folks in the next video, 73. Thank you.